Alrighty, so this talk is all about beam and error handling and critically how beam doesn't actually handle errors directly. So whenever you have an exception in any of your pardus, that error just propagates up to the runner and that runner can do whatever it likes from that point in time. You know, uh, the prism runner that Weibo just created, which is primarily useful for like local proof of concepting and testing out features. If that er runner runs into an error right now, pipeline's over, it fails. Dataflow does handle errors. I don't know exactly the error handling capabilities of the other runners like Flink or Spark, but in Dataflow, if you're running in batch, if you try to process an element through a stage and it fails, it'll get retried four times. If that still fails, it'll fail the pipeline. That's inconvenient, but usually recoverable. In streaming mode, an error is retried an unlimited number of times. So no matter how many times an error, uh, a piece of data it tries to get processed, if it fails, it'll go back and retry unlimited times. That can result in a number of different kinds of problems because that can poison your pipeline in a, a number of different ways. So here we have a pretty straightforward pipeline where you have some input collection of data of whatever kind, and you're piping it through some P transform that is erroring for whatever reason. It doesn't really matter. If that is happening, then okay, those elements are going in. Some of them are failing for whatever reason. Those are getting retried. If you have an unlimited at a sufficient scale, you will inevitably have these failing records. They will continue to get retried forever, assuming they are in a permanently failed state. And that will actually build up and start eating at your actual like processing and CPU resources. The worst possible scenario for this is if there's an aggregation involved as well. So if you have an error in transform and that error were it to complete successfully, is supposed to go into some windowed aggregation. So you're trying to cr create some like kind of summary that's like a count of how many user events you had in the last five minutes. If one element there is failing and continually getting retried, that will never complete, the window will never finish, and so that entire windowed aggregation will be in this stuck state, essentially, with no real good way to recover from it. And that can actually result in poisoning a lot of your data. This makes sense from the idea that we would much rather not produce an invalid aggregation than to produce an, incom than to produce an incomplete aggregation, but in practical terms, that's usually not the behavior most people want in their pipeline. If some data element is permanently failing, they want something to happen other than this execution getting stuck. The straightforward solution is take those errors and put them somewhere else. So from the Beam model perspective, what this is actually doing is instead, when you get that error, instead of letting it propagate up to the runner, you instead say, I'm going to put this in some other P collection, do some other processing on it, but from the runner's perspective, that processing happened successfully. And as a result, the processing can continue downstream. It's really important as part of all of this to recognize that not all record errors are really what we would call bad records, right? Un retrying an unlimited number of times makes a lot of sense in some contexts. For example, let's say you pay for some quota against some API and that quota you pay for monthly it's the 29th of a month, you've exceeded your quota, you get into a state where you're gonna keep retrying, continue failing all of your requests against this API, but when the 30th happens and you're still failing and then you roll over to the first, suddenly your quota gets reset and suddenly all of these requests will complete. You probably could also fix this by increasing your quota with whatever vendor you're paying, and that means that even though that you'll get into a temporarily blocked state, you fix it by modifying something kind of external to the pipeline such that suddenly all of these requests can complete. There was nothing wrong with your data that caused them to get into an infinite retry loop. There's something else going on, connectivity, maybe a data center's down external somewhere, what have you. That is not the kind of error handling we're talking about. This is very much about error handling when the data itself is somehow malformed. And we support this in Beam now in most, uh, in most of the tier one IOs. So what you can do is you can take a, your records that you're processing, 
and you can construct an error handler and pass that error handler into the IO you're trying to use. So running through this code, we've got, we register an error handler with the pipeline. And then when we configure our BigQuery IO write in this example, we simply say, put all the bad records into this error handler. In this case, what it'll do, it'll is anytime you fail to write to BigQuery as a result of malformed data, because we in BigQuery we can we we are able to differentiate between temporary connectivity issues and like a malformed record where it like doesn't match the schema of your BigQuery table. It'll then send it off to Kafka IO to be emitted on some Kafka topic that you've configured here in your error handler. It's pretty easy to make this go to multiple syncs. So if you're trying to uh, do multiple transforms, and, but you want them all to go into one error queue for whatever reason, because that's how you want to operationally manage these kind of exceptions that are rare but inevitable. Uh, you can put them all to one place and ha simply have either your operations team uh, or whomever you want to look at to look at that one queue for all of these errors, even if they're coming from, uh, even if they're results of trying to write to be at multiple sources. It's pretty simple to do the same thing if the error is in a source, right? We simply, you have simply have to define the, the records outside the try block. And what can you actually do with an error handler? So an error handler, as in this thing we register with the pipeline, is any P transform that takes a collection of bad records. So uh, the most simple case is you're going to write this out to, you know, a, an error queue like Kafka, you're gonna just write it to file somewhere on GCS or S3. But if you know that certain um, kinds of errors like this do show up and you're able to resolve them programmatically sometimes, you could have this P transform be something custom you implement, something that takes the bad record, inspects it, determines, oh, this is a result of a schema update that we did badly a couple of weeks ago. And as a result, there's a couple of bits of data that are still malformed and you can handle those manually and then kind of continue, continue do, doing some automated processing here as well. If you want to enrich the bad records in some way, what have you. A bad record itself is a pretty simple construct. We have these kind of two elements, the element of the record and the element of the error. The record, we if there's a coder available for the data at the time, because sometimes there isn't a coder available, we'll put will emit the encoded record and what coder we used for that record. And we'll also try and have a human readable view of what this record is. And we go through a couple of steps to try and do this. Whenever you're dealing with data that you know is bad somehow, it's hard to have really strict guarantees about what you're going to emit here because why it is bad is usually not super clear. It's not clear in the general case, but we, you know, first we try and serialize it as JSON. If that fails, we'll just try and use Java's two string. Like we will do a couple of different steps to try and make sure something comes out to describe what the actual data was as best we possibly can. The error itself also contains some information about like the, the actual Java exception itself, but then also a description of what was being attempted when it failed. So in these, more complex IOs, there's usually a couple of different steps of data transformation before it's actually written to the sync itself. So whatever exact step we're on will actually be come out in the, this error element. And as a result, it's pretty easy now for our IOs that actually support error handling to manage these kinds of temporary, these kinds of uh, data errors. You know, if you have, you know, a schema configured with your Kafka IO or PubSub, if your data isn't matching your schema in BigQuery, if for whatever reason there's issues with your data writing to any of these file formats, it will hand, do its best to handle that and separate that out as something to be managed independently of your pipeline instead of kind of trying to being retried inevitably in streaming, the streaming context. In my opinion, this kind of behavior is required for a large scale streaming pipeline. And it's a really big nice to have in batch just so it means that you're more able to you know, instead of having to run a batch job, have it fail, fix the couple of records and rerun it, you can just fix those couple of records in post. If you're looking to handle these kind of things in your own transforms, because uh, I know some people here, they build kind of these more complex transforms that then they give to other members within their organization to kind of use, that's a little bit more complicated, unfortunately. 
So here's a sample Doofin wherein we're trying to format some element in a way, and we're, that format, formatting can fail. So for whatever reason, maybe you know, you're trying to serialize something as a string, and it, if it doesn't match the schema, it'll fail. What you'll do is we have a type called bad record handler. It's got a couple of implementations that are built in, and you can modify your process element to when you get that format exception to send it to the bad record error handler. One of two things is going to happen, depending on whether your, your user configured an error handler or not. If they configured an error handler, what this bad record handler is going to do is actually pass it on to the error handler object. If they didn't configure an error handler, it's going to re-throw the exception right in place, such that it will go back to the runner to handle whatever error behavior it, it does by default. This means you don't need a ton of branching logic within your uh, doofuns to determine this. It's kind of handled by whether or not your user actually configures uh, an error handler. And one thing that's super important to note here um, for people authoring these kinds of doofuns, it is generally, not necessarily always, but generally the case that you will only ever want to be using these bad record handlers in a process element. You can mechanically use them in setup and teardown uh, and uh, some other things like that. But if you're doing that, it's probably incorrect because it means you're not handling a single element. If you're not handling that single element, it's probably not a, a record that is bad. It's probably some other category of exception that is more likely to need to be retried like normal. One other thing to note here, um, because of how Fusion works in Dataflow, specifically for actually executing part is, you do not, in general, want to have your, your try-catch also include your output method, because you can actually catch exceptions that are downstream of you in the pipeline sometimes. It's rare, but it can happen. So generally, do not have your output in, the, in your try-catch. Upstream of that, in the P transform itself, you'll need to basically take this collection of errors and actually hand it to the error handler. So that looks basically like this. Your doofun that actually can now emit these kinds of errors will emit both the your main records tag and your bad, the bad record tag as examples in the scenario. You can then tell the error handler that the user configured just to add the bad record tag collection. With this coder, you do have to manually set that despite it always being the same because of the Java SDK being a bit verbose sometimes. And then you can return the user's expected collection of that is just the good records. This means that it's super easy for people to chain their operations, send the bad records to the error handler that they, can, they configure, and not have to think too hard about managing all of these exceptions. And that's my talk. <laughs>